Items. In competitive Smash, that's not a word you'll hear a lot. In Smash, items are most famous for getting turned off at every competitive tournament. The no item rule goes all the way back to the days when Ken was the king of Smash and the East and West Coast battled for supremacy. The West Coast played with items on until East Coast players gradually convinced them off of it. But as Smash aged, Sakurai showed the community that you can turn off items all you want, but you still can't take them out of his game. In this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with items in competitive play. There will be no home run bats, but there will be gyros, grenades, and, well, maybe a bob here or there. That's right, we're talking about character-specific items and how to use them. For a lot of players, this video might seem niche and frankly not too important. But ever since Brawl Diddy Kong, items have been getting more and more prevalent in Smash. In terms of item-centric characters, Melee just had Peach. Ultimate has Snake, Rob, Pac-Man, Mega Man, Link, Diddy Kong, and more. All those characters are pretty good, if not higher top tier, and you'll encounter at least one of them in every region, every arena, and on quick play. So even if you don't play any of them, don't neglect this lesson. You might just learn how to disarm some of the most frustrating characters in the game. First, let's start by differentiating items and projectiles. Projectiles are pretty much most ranged hitboxes you can throw out. Items are a particular kind of projectile that you can hold, throw, and drop. So, Samus's charge shot is just a projectile. You could absorb it with something like Isabelle's pocket, but you can't hold it and throw it normally. Anything Peach gets from a turnip pull is an item and works like most of the stuff you can turn off in the settings menu when you go to a casual friend's house. Most items have the same rules as projectiles, but most projectiles don't have the same rules as items. To understand items, you've got to understand three core building blocks. Hold, throw, and drop. Let's start with throws. Every character can throw in four directions, up, down, forward, and back. Down throws will make some non-explosive items bounce, and most explosives, well, explode. But some explosions won't hurt you, like the ba or Banjo's rear egg. Others, like Young Link and Toon Link's bombs and Snake's grenades, will. Snake's grenades and Toon Link's bombs hurt everyone in the explosion radius. However, they will never hurt you if you hold them and shield. Their explosions will shield poke if they're thrown or dropped, but won't if they're held. Lots of items react very differently to each directional throw. For example, Rob's gyro won't go too far when you throw it forward, but will basically fly into space when you throw it up. On top of the four directions are also two types of throws, weak and strong, or regular and smash. Weak throws tend to move more slowly and go less far, while strong throws move faster and sometimes send the item further. To weak throw an item, you just tap the right stick, or attack in a direction. To strong throw an item, you hold the stick while pressing attack. Weak and strong throws pretty much work like tilts and smash attacks, hence smash throw. When you jump and throw, you will strong throw most items, and when you strong throw, the sound cues will be slightly different, and your character might grunt. You know, just to show you that they're really trying out there, coach. Weak and strong throws are super item dependent. For example, Snake's grenades travel a lot farther when strong thrown, Peach's turnips don't travel much farther at all, and then the bob bomb travels a lot farther on a strong up throw, but about the same distance on a forward or back throw. Mega Man's saw blade doesn't seem to change at all on weak or strong throw. Speaking of Mega Man, some characters have unique item throws with their own projectiles. Four big examples are Mega Man, Rob, Banjo, and Snake. When Mega Man summons his saw blades, he can send it in unique diagonal angles in addition to up, left, or right. Throwing it down will make Mega Man drop the saw blade, letting the player pick it up and use it like a normal item. Rob can charge his projectile and gets different distances, speeds, and damage depending on the charge. It also goes a little farther and has a different arc in the air than on the ground. And at full charge, it's one of the fastest item throws in the game, at just three frames. Which brings us to frame data. Ha! <laughs> frame data. Just when you think things were complex enough as is. Every character's throws have different frame data, and throwing something forward is usually faster than throwing it backward. Generally, item-based characters have better throws because they were playing baseball while all the rushdown characters were doing track and field. All forward item throws fall between a range of 7 and 11, and all back item throws fall between 7 and 14 frames. 
So a three frame item throw is pretty good, and one of the things that makes Rob's fully charged gyro so scary for rushdown characters. It'll beat most moves out of dash, and can be too quick to react and shield at close ranges. We'll return to frame data, but for now, back to unique throws, Banjo and Snake might have the deepest item throw meta in the game. Both Banjo and Snake can weak or strong throw their grenades for very different arcs. Banjo also gets access to something quite like a weak throw arc when he first shoots out his rear egg. The egg will slowly bounce, letting him catch up and grab it. In the air, Banjo can drift while shooting out his item, letting him catch it faster. Snake's grenades might have more throw arcs than any item in the game. When he first pulls a grenade, he can throw it forward in several different arcs depending on how you hold the left stick. Then, Snake can drop and pick up his grenades to access his strong and weak throw arcs. Between all his types of throws, Snake has tons of ways to use grenades. There's one more curious use for item throws. You can throw an item without dropping shield, which is pretty big because it takes 11 frames to drop shield. For some characters, this is really big. For example, Link's two fastest out-of-shield options are his up special and his forward item throw. His up special is the higher reward option because it does more damage and can kill, but it also has a lot of end lag, making it committal. If Link whiffs his up special, his opponent could land a smash attack. Link's forward item throw has very little end lag, making it much safer. For a character like Diddy Kong, this is an even bigger deal because his banana trips opponents and leads to kills. Diddy Kong's forward throw is frame 7, so he potentially has a frame 7 out of shield move that can kill you. The downside is, lots of item throws will lose to attacks. Items have a hitbox, but the throw doesn't, meaning you could get smacked by an opponent's move. So, usually Diddy Kong's 5 frame fast up smash is usually the better option out of shield. This almost goes without saying, but if you play an item character or play against an item character frequently, spend time in training mode to make sure you know how their trajectories and throws work. Now let's talk a bit about holding items. To hold most items, you walk up and attack or grab it. If the opponent throws an item, most of the time you can catch it by grabbing, attacking, or dodging. If an item is about to explode, then you technically can catch it, but it's functionally like getting hit. If a character drops an item directly above you, it'll fall so fast that you often can't catch it, especially while in shield. This is part of how Peach or Link can use their items to start combos or build pressure. We've covered holding, catching, and throwing items. Last, but definitely not least, is dropping items. Dropping an item depends on the item itself. Snake will drop his grenade if you press shield. All characters will toss items like the Beam Sword or Home Run Bat behind them if you stand still and press grab. The one reliable method across the board is the Z-Drop. You jump in the air and press grab, and your character will drop the item directly under them. This tiny tech is crazy important. Why? Because it takes one frame to drop the item. That's right, one sixtieth of a second. Even more importantly, a dropped item still has a hitbox. So, when anyone has an item and they're in the air, they have the option to put out a hitbox under them in one frame. Now, most importantly, when you Z-drop an item, you put an opponent in very slight knockback that's perfect for combos and kill confirms. For characters like Peach and Link, this opens up a world of combos. For Mega Man, it gives him one of his best kill confirms, Sawblade to Up Tilt. For every character in the game, this opens up the option to use aerials while still keeping a tight hold on a useful item. Normally, you throw an item and it's gone. It's either too far away to pick up, or off stage, or gone into the ether. With the Z-Drop, you can quickly drop an item, then perform an aerial and re-grab the item during the aerial. This is really important because it lets every character hold an item and still use their aerials. If you're an item character, this is great for you because you can keep your item and often get new combos. If you're playing against an item character, this is great for you because more often than not, item characters can't summon their item after it's grabbed. So, once you grab Link's bomb or Rob's gyro, you can keep them from using it as long as you can play out your game using aerials. And for a lot of characters, you can do that. A lot. Of characters. Why did they make you? Z-drops are particularly meaningful for non-explosive items since Z-dropping an explosive on an opponent will probably blow you up too. Integrating Z-drops into neutral is basically like learning new combos. 
If you play Link or Peach, you'll really want to learn it. If you're playing against or Peach or Link, you've probably got better things to practice than the combos you have using their item. But you can improvise a lot of combos using their items just by Z-dropping then following with one of your faster aerials or a solid kill aerial at high percents. Z-drops also work well for pressuring shields, adding a little bit of chip damage and stun onto your opponent's shield. They'll often trick opponents into dropping shield or trying an out-of-shield option too early and getting hit. And a Z-dropped projectile can increase the risk of a shield poke, too. However, Z-drops aren't foolproof approach tools by any means. To Z-drop, you have to get directly above your opponent, which isn't always easy. They can stop you with anti-airs or by going air-to-air -air with you and throwing out an aerial in the path of your approach. This is where the game becomes mental, and you can counter their options with tricky movement or by throwing the item rather than dropping it. But that's just another reason why learning Z-dropping is important. You get another layer of options to add to the mental game. It allows you to hold onto your items, deprive an opponent of their item, access new combos and kill confirms, and play differently. And that's true of a lot of the item techniques and details we've covered in the videos. Whether you love or hate items, there's a surprising amount of gameplay behind them. Learning about it might not just help you play an item character, it might help you beat an item character.